Hey, welcome back to the channel, you guys. It is another morning. That means another fun warm-up with Michael. Clear to art. So this morning we're doing a little talking. We're doing a little drawing. Hopefully you guys enjoy. We're continuing on the quest. It's a noble quest. To get better at drawing every single day. And uh, I believe the last drawing we did, the last session we had together, was portraits. So that's what we're continuing on using visual reference. So enjoy the process. Portraits. Portraits are one of those fun, again, one of those fun things that, that you know, we all as artists, I think a lot of people, artists in general, tend to shy away from. Portraits are an acquired fun. You know, they are one of those things that it takes time to learn. It takes time for placement. It takes time to learn where stuff is. It, it just takes it, time. That's what I'm basically trying to say. I'm trying to iterate to you that it takes time to you know do the portraits it takes time to learn how to do portraits and not everybody does them well case in point <laughs> um yeah learning how to do portraits does take it takes diligence it takes time it takes uh know-how study and that's what this is this is this is known as a portrait study so then we're gonna come down here we're gonna draw this big beard sideburns is the arm. So I was watching a video yesterday um, of one of the artists that I actually, I like him. He's very crass, kind of a person that, you know, he, he has developed his channel and he uses this character in the context of his channel to really have fun. And he's good. I mean, he's he's a working professional. He's done storyboards. He's worked at you know, for Netflix. He's done stuff on on Avatar: The Airbender uh, and so on and so forth. His name Ethan Becker. He's he's great. He he does really fun stuff and he makes fun of the channels, um, you know, because a lot of the channels take themselves so seriously. And and I I can tell he's you know kind of tongue in cheek. He's like I said, developed this character that's quite crass and. You know, tongue in cheek, and and a lot of people I think don't particularly know his brand of humor, but I love it. I think it's great. So, if you get a chance, just look up Ethan Becker, and you know, forgive me if he offends you. It's exactly what you need in your life. You need some offense that is, you know, making fun of you, making fun of the artists that you love, and sometimes that's what you know what you need. Um, <laughs> so, what I'm trying to say is, he 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 made a little short video. I think it was like 50 seconds long. And he talked about shorthand. What is shorthand? Shorthand drawing, shorthand sketching is a methodology that you develop whenever you draw things over and over again, such as, as an animation. You simplify things down to help help you draw faster. You don't get it mired down in the minutia and the details, and you're able to crank out a lot of volume in a short amount of time very accurately, and you rely upon the acting of what you're doing to really, you know, make the drawing um, speak to you. Uh, you know, illustration is one of those things where, you know, it's one image, you put a lot of time into it, and you, uh, you know, there's a lot of elements and balance and things like that, and you think about all those things wherever you're drawing. Whereas in the shorthand, you develop this process, again, of drawing something over and over again <clears throat> that doesn't rely upon quote-unquote details. It gets down to the action, the acting, the just, you know, the rudimentary uh, elements. And, you know, this is something that I highly recommend you doing. I mean, he did such a short video on it. That, I mean, that video, I thought for a second, man, what a powerful video that he just made. And he did, I mean, I'm sure he realized it was powerful because he's a smart guy. And, you know, even though he does make fun of a lot of people and, and whatnot, he is a very talented uh, individual and, and he's just, you know, very cool. He's, he's fun to watch. If, if you, if you don't mind, you know, him saying some things that maybe offend you, but at the end of the day, he's trying to get information across to you that is really important from a professional standpoint. And, 
you know, shorthand, drawing something over and over again, that's one of the things that these drawings do, you know, these daily drawings, these daily quips, exploration, that really get you in the mindset of, of simplifying your shape, simplifying those things, and then adding these elements in. You know, I can't tell you how many, I wish I had a, <clears throat> how many times, you know, I've drawn, like, I'll try and find them. Like this particular character. I have drawn this character a lot. I'm very familiar with his proportions. I'm very familiar with his actions. And a lot of times whenever I go to draw him, I'm not thinking about all of those things. I'm thinking about the attitude. I'm thinking about the gesture. I'm thinking about the weight. I'm thinking about the moment. And whenever I go to add those additional elements in that make him an illustration, then you can see how clear he is in terms of what he's trying to say. I think that's, you know, primarily what, you know, Ethan was was trying to get at was the fact that, you know, in animation, you're, you're focusing on the acting, you're focusing on the gesture, the attitude, the quick read, and especially since he has to crank out so many drawings uh, in animation, whether it's, you know, as a storyboard artist, whether it's an in-betweener, um, you know, whether it's a key artist or whatever, you have to crank out an enormous amount because it's 24 frames a second. And yeah, there's a lot of work to do. Um, so as you see, I've blocked in my circle. I didn't go in and I know this is gonna be real furry, but I did it as a simple shape. And a lot of times you'll see me do this. So I've, 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 got, I've gotten in, <laughs> I've fleshed out the circular part. I've placed things where they, where they need to be, even going so far as to place the eye where I believe it needs to be. <clears throat> and as you see, I've got this panel right here coming around. And I've placed in the goggles here. Again, not getting into all the bleh. I'm, I'm literally just getting into the, to the placement of those items. As I progress through, you'll see me come back with a darker line, and I'll put in <clears throat> the details. So let's go ahead, we'll get this eye right here. That trick that I showed you the other day, it's not so much a trick as it is a, again, that shorthand, that shorthand that I've developed, you know, doing storyboarding, doing uh, traditional animation, and toy design and all those other things that I've done. Those little tips and tricks, you know, having that forehead come around, you know, drawing that forehead coming in through, even though I can't typic I can't technically see through this goggle, I do draw a little bit through to make sure that I have that placement of the eye correct, and that eye comes around, and this nose actually comes out a little bit further right here. And he's got this bulbous drawing that line right there, that line of action. I'm drawing little lines of action here and there. I'm gonna have this nose come down. And there we go, curve that under. That strong, there's a strong line right there. Okay. I'm gonna go ahead and draw some baggage right here because I see a lot of baggage in this eye, this cavity. Here's the center. I'm gonna have this come up and down. And you'll see me draw a lot of lines because um, I'm trying to translate what I see up on this image, but also I'm trying to nuance it a little bit to maybe give it a different attitude. Just slightly. Here's that brow that comes around right here and actually comes up and he's raising his eyebrow. And I'm going to have that come around and here is the edge of that hat and this comes around here and then the wrinkles now this is important and this is one of the things that is overlooked a lot of times especially in the context of looking at somebody that's a little bit older the skeletal structure it changes slightly underneath but what really changes is the fat content and also the elasticity of the skin that's why you're going to see wrinkles so all these wrinkle points like this ocular shape you you know i'm going to go ahead and reaffirm that and then i'm going to go in and i'm going to draw these wrinkles and and looking at the at the um at the shapes of the shadows 
I am going to understand these wrinkles are going to fan out from the corner of that eye. As I mess up at the corner of that eye, and I'm going to have this come up here. And then this is going to come in because he's squinting. And this is going to wrap around, again, thinking three-dimensionally. I'm going to go ahead and come up, and I'm going to draw this. And I'm going to explain why I'm doing that in just a few months. Rush me. What are you doing rushing me? I'm going to have the eyebrow. Okay. And we're going to have this come down. I remember one student making fun. <laughs> he made fun of me. And that's why he got an F. You don't make fun of the teach, homie. I'm just kidding. I ended up giving him an A because we built a rapport and he ended up slipping me a couple 20s. Anyway, so I, uh, he, he was making fun of me because he goes, you know how you teach? You do, first you put it here and then you do this and that and this and that and then gosh, here, you know, that's the way you do it and you inspiration and you do things and you, you, know, you, you sacrifice the time and then that's it. You, you, you become a success. <laughs> I'm like, well, my goodness, that's novel. You get an A. <laughs> um, I, I'm, I'm, I'm joking. But what he basically said was the way that I teach is I'm trying to get you to look at the bigger picture in a simple way. Um, you know, we all get caught up in the details so much that a lot of times we, we, we miss the simplification of things, especially in the beginning. We get, you know, I want to do this. I'm going to sit down and draw. Um, and we, we miss the reality that, you know, simplification is something to build on. You know, you don't put a foundation down, uh, I'm sorry, you don't build, you don't build a house without a good foundation. And that's all I'm trying to teach is good foundation. You know, whenever I went to Ringling, I had already had foundation at another school and I kind of felt gypped in a way. I'm like, let me have some foundation. So I ended up taking a lot of extra drawing classes that maybe necessarily I didn't need to take, but they really helped me, you know? Because any drawing class that you take, even if it's a bad one, and, and I'm sure you'll have so many people that'll disagree with me, you know, even if it's a bad one and you determine, man, this guy sucks and he doesn't know what he's talking about, there are aspects of that that you can determine you can take or you can leave. And even knowing something that's bad will help you because then you know that it's what? That it's bad. Okay. So I've fleshed those in now. Some baggage because you've got this fat pocket that is right here underneath the eye and it collects the fat and then the fat of the weight, it sags and it pulls the lower lid down and then you look like an old bag of, bag of bones. Um, I've always wanted to take a group of students or a group of people, um, you know, teaching them and letting them understand that there are different body types. It's not just, you know, super hot, uh, fantastic young people that have the bodies that, you know, are interesting. It is. You know, large people, thick people, um, muscular people, uh, old people. I, I love to draw old people. That sounds kind of weird. I love to draw old people. I love to draw old people because there's so many stories there, right? The stories they can tell, the things they do um, and have done in, in their lives. And man, I just love it. So now what I'm going to do, as you see, this, this really throws people for a loop. This group of hair right here has the potential to frustrate you because what you want to do, what your first inclination is to go ahead and draw every single hair. And I'm going to tell you right now that is a huge freaking mistake if you're doing something like this, which is a very simplified drawing that I'm trying to just teach you the elements, these little simple elements and roadmaps uh, of portraiture drawing. Um, so now we're gonna go and we're gonna draw the center line down and you just lip, top or lip, that's going to actually partially be covered by a mustache. And then I'm have this cheek that comes out that I can't really see. This needs to come out a little bit further. This needs to come down. Sometimes you find things that just, there we go, that just end up 
chafing your biscuit. Okay, that comes down. Again, we've had that center line that comes here. Comes around. Here's the center line. Here's the part of his mouth. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw a little simple. It's real simple. Here's the bounce side of his cheek. Comes here. Here's the part of his chin. Okay, and this goes up. Again, you can't see any of this right now in the reference because it's covered by copious amounts of whiskers. So we're going to draw the whiskers in. Here's this, 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 and that, and this, and there's the drawing. <laughs> okay, enough of the funny, enough of the funny man, funny man. Get to drawing, monkey boy. Okay, so here we go. Mustache comes up. I used to actually own, <laughs> I owned a handlebar mustache. I grew one. I grew it and I wore it for like two years. Man the maintenance. Let's just say, those of you who are interested in doing it, I definitely recommend it. But be warned, it is a maintenance thing that you will have to do all the time. I also, also had a very large beard. Um, and I think you can see that on some of the old videos. So now what I'm doing is I'm going back. So this is the kind of the stage that I that I experience. Let's have this. It's covered by the goggles. This is kind of the stage that I experience. Okay, so I know I got to do something down here, but I'm not ready. I'm not ready for this. So I've taken a mental snapshot of this. I've worked a little bit on this. Now I'm going to work up here. This will this will actually pull my um, my auditory brain mechanisms as I look at the reference and I translate. So whenever I come back here, I will have resolved some of, actually I can already feel it. You can feel it sometimes. There we go. That bottom lip comes here. Okay, the whiskers. It's, it's a weird, it's a weird feeling. I we'll have the whisker come up, and I'm changing this whisker structure somewhat because I don't like how transparent this is right here. So I'm gonna I'm gonna make that a little less transparent, and I'm gonna give him a little bit more. There's the whiskers. They come in, and you notice I'm not drawing every single whisker. Oh, could you imagine that? I couldn't imagine that drawing every single one. So we're gonna go ahead and shade this slightly. Now I'm gonna think form. I'm gonna think this mustache comes out. So I'm gonna have it come out a little bit and I'm gonna have it wrap around slightly on the bottom. I <laughs> broke my pencil again. <laughs> you know what? You have failed me for the last time. Ha! I think this, I mean, this pencil's good. I'm not really sure what's going on, so please pardon the, let's go ahead and sharpen it again. Boop, boop. I don't know why. I do press hard. press hard. So let's have that as a backup. Okay. <sighs> I digress. I digress. Okay. So let's do this. You can see a little bit of his chin underneath. So here it's a little less round. So let's go ahead and have a little divot. Boom, boom, little divot. Let's draw these in. Okay. Good. Good. It feels good. I'm feeling good. Okay. He's got hash burns. <laughs> no, they're not hash burns. They're side burns. What? I like hash burns. <laughs> just kidding. Just kidding. So now I can go back in and, and I'm just literally, I don't want to say paint by numbers, but I've put in the roadmap. I can start concentrating a little bit more on the details. <clears throat> Let's have this here. 
Here's his arm. And now the eyeballs. So let's go ahead and, because these are going to be really the focus point, the focal point of this area. So let's go ahead, and even though that's white, we're going to shadow that in. We're going to go ahead and put some shadow in there, put some value in there. And we're going to go ahead and really tighten that up a little bit. And where you have two skin folds come together, that's really where it's going to be the darkest. So you can see on the reference, he's lost weight, he's skinny, his skin is, is not very elastic, and you see all the sunken in uh, areas right here, the sunken in areas. So <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and this lid, sunken in areas, and I'm going to go ahead and tilt it on its side, and I'm just going to start shading according to what I see and what I think is important. Okay, and I can't press too hard because I don't want to break my pen. So you can see after we've we've started really focusing on the structure and not the line, <clears throat> focusing on value, focusing, let's go ahead and do this in just a little bit more. Okay, he's got some eyelashes. He's He likes the eyelashes. He's, he's just slightly because you get a little bit older and you don't really have as much. If you're like me and you have nothing. <clears throat> okay. So we're doing this. A little bit of a shadow and shade here. It helps to squint your eyes a little bit. Or at least it does me. Let's go ahead and have this come up. We've got this a lot of wrinkles here. Because he's got his eyebrow coming up a little bit. Alright. And here's the hash burns. <laughs> <laughs> okay, stop it. Stop it. Okay, this comes up. And then I've got the... It's like this. Okay, so the underlying structure, <clears throat> again, your skin gets thinner as you get older. So these are all factors that you learn as you as you progress through um, understanding and learning body, you know, body anatomy as it pertains to age. Your skin gets thinner, so what happens? It starts laying on your bones more. You start seeing cheekbones uh, a wee bit more, depending on if you're a huge, if if you know you're a little bit thicker. I was going to say something else, but I changed my mind. Um, if you're if you're you know if you're bigger, whatnot. But if if you're not and you're and you're thinner, you're you're going to see a lot more of the bones. So this ridge right here would be the very top the part of the skull, and this comes here, and all the rest of this business is going to be cartilage. So you have this underlying structure here, and then you're going to have a little bone right here. Again, as you have that wrinkle come here, just remember there's a little bone. Actually, it's a big bone. It's the bridge of your nose. <clears throat> And then I have squinting my eyes. All this is in shadow. And then I've got the nose. Again, in shadow. In shadow. Comes around. And then I've got this whiteness. Here. So I'm, I'm pushing, but I'm... I'm, I'm I'm putting a lot of the pressure right here on the on the area that is most exposed. If I put the pressure here and I'm pushing down, that's going to break the uh, the pencil. So literally, you'll see me put my finger right here, just like if you were to touch something. You know, your your finger touches, you get a more tactile feel of exactly how much pressure you put down, and that really helps me as I go through this whole area right here is going to be dark. Now, could I use something like this? Absolutely. You know, if I sharpen this and I go in, the, the, the challenge that I have with these is, first of all, they don't erase. So that's kind of a bummer. But, you know, they also, they kind of smear a little bit, just slightly, and, and they have more of a tooth to them. So when you're putting it down, it's a it's a it's a much softer material, so it goes into the paper that much different. And you can see, even though, actually, I like the way that looks. Experiment success. See, I told you I knew what I was doing. 
but you can see how you can go in and you can really start putting it. It is a different hue as well. This is a dark blue where this is more of a, uh, a mid-tone blue. So if you really want to get in there and start putting in some darker values to really push his face out, then definitely consider that. And you can see what I'm talking about. The tooth is a little bit different than this nice grain. This has more grain to it where this is much smoother. <clears throat> I kind of like this better. Okay, so let's get up to the goggles. And you see I'm at a point right now. Typically I would have a piece of sandpaper off to the side, but since I didn't do that because I just didn't, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna go on the fly. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and again drawing in some of these important elements. This is full of wrinkles up here. So this is, this whole top part right here is a journey. <laughs> a journey in drawing. You know, I, I don't really want to do that. Um, not Especially not since I'm trying to get, you know, something simplified to you guys in a very short amount of time. So, all right. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to shade this in. Again, choosing where to simplify. Choosing where to make that choice not to get in there and quote unquote render something. Spend the time. Spend the time on what's important. Again, squinting the eyes, coming back here. You know, this strap, the strap goes here, comes down, and is the cinch part to this area right here. I broke my pencil again in your face, pincer. You don't rule me. So, <laughs> okay, so here we go. We'll do this. Have that come out. And this long seam right there. Generalized shape right here. That's just kind of the area of that flap. It is the flap area. And this bends around like this. Got to watch my tangents. Tangents. Okay, so now we've really blocked in light and shadow. We've got a nice portrait. This would be a really decent base for me to go back. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back and I'm going to start fleshing in some of these wrinkle areas because the you know it's it's those details that really bring out the character of the piece right maybe he's a pilot maybe he's crazy i don't know now what i'm doing if you look i'm i'm putting in some of those ver that variation of line weight that i've talked about before variation of line weight sh helping um help show form a little bit better help <clears throat> help you define those those areas uh, between hard you know hard and organic if that makes sense so now we'll come back just got some wrinkles here and there and defining and making those shadows a little bit clearer like I said you can literally you could have an entire day on this eye alone. I mean, this eye is epic in the reference. I mean, I look at that and I think, man, you can really see this person has had a life. These wrinkles right here are just, oh, epic. Anyway, talking about going to a retirement home with a group of people. <laughs> yeah, that was, that was a long... That was a long segue. What'd you go do, make a sandwich? Um, and taking pictures and looking at some of these individuals that have, that have stories and really respecting them at, you know, for what they are. A lot of people stick people in homes and they, I mean, that's our past. That's, you look at that and you think to yourself, man, they have stories, they have children, they have families. They paid, paid bills too and drank coffee from coffee houses and they got to see our world as it developed and, you know, my grandmother um, uh, 
she left us way too early, I believe, in probably 1991, 92. <clears throat> and she was born in uh, 1912. And man, she had so many stories. And I asked her, I said, because, uh, you know, I was crazy. As most kids were in the 80s, I was insane, certifiably. Too much candy, too much sugar, too much TV. And she was living with us at the time, and she watched the whole thing. And she was she was just a wonderful lady. And I remember talking to her and getting some of the really cool stories. And I didn't even know what she did. And then she told me she was a nurse, and you know she never learned how to drive. She always had access to public transportation, and or she had you know her son or somebody else take her to work, or she rode with friends. And she was a neat lady. You know her name was Gladys. Gladys. What an interesting name, you know. She went through the Great Depression. She went through the the wars, um, first and second World War. Well, first, yeah, the first World War. Some what 1914, somewhere around there, then the Second World War. <clears throat> but it was just a, she's just a fascinating lady. You don't meet, you know, if you choose to, you can stay in your own little bubble, which is you know your preference. But I choose. I choose to venture out, and I always, you know, I, it's funny, I'll, I'll go and I'll try and talk to the, if I see an elderly person sitting down, you know, a lot of times they don't want to be bothered, but if you go and you have an honest conversation with them, man, they can really blow your mind with what they did. You know, I didn't even know, you know, coming to home, I didn't even know my dad worked in the space program. You know, one day we were sitting there, and yeah, I'm talking about NASA, I'm talking about all that, and... You know, was, we were watching a program and I saw a rocket explode on television because it was a documentary. He goes, oh, I remember that. He goes, I was, at a, I was behind a truck when that thing exploded. And I looked at him and I go, who are you? I don't even know who you are. <sighs> yeah. If you don't ask the questions, you'll never get the information. Okay, so what I'm doing now is I'm defining some of these planes because I got this, <clears throat> I've got this invisible line that comes around. There's this eyeball. Here's this right here. And then this plane right here wraps around, it comes towards me a little bit. So I wanna I wanna give a little bit of shading underneath here. A little bit of shading. See this comes all the way around, this whole shape, these whiskers. And then this whole shape, this is all wrinkles, this is all fabric, so I'm I don't really want to deal with that right now. <laughs> Again, you have to choose what is important. And right now, this area is important. You know, I'm not going to get into all this back here. And I can just give an indication. And that indication is going to be enough. It's, you know, I've got this wrinkle right here. It comes around. A little wrinkle right there. Squinting. That fabric comes. Oops. Snap! Switching gears once again. <laughs> this comes down. And then I've got to shade this in. Watch your contrast too. The second you start putting really heavy contrast in a piece, it's going to direct your eye. So that line right there, you're going to go right to it every time. You know, and I don't really, didn't really want that. So I'm going to take my finger and I'm going to mush on it. That is an art term that you need to learn. It's called mushing. Okay, boys and girls, today we're going to draw some pictures. We're going to draw some pictures. It's going to be so much fun. Get your learning caps on. Tighten your learning caps, my kitties. Let's do this. Let's get our observation goggles on. Ready? Ready? So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put um, an indication here and there. Oh, my gosh, that sound makes me want to vomit. Some indication here and there, just some skin anomalies, right? Skin anomalies really help. Again, this is an aged person. He's gone through a lot of things, so just a couple freckles here and there. We're not going to make him Pippi Longstocking or anything. Pippi Longstocking? Who's Pippi Longstocking? I don't know who that is. Pippi Longstocking was a dragon from the 1950s that was developed. I'm just kidding. Pippi Longstocking was a red-headed little deviant child that caused shenanigans in the stories of Pippi Longstocking. And she was a redhead, she had lots of freckles. Um, be careful that you don't place the freckles in equidistance. Make sure you change them in size and change them in shape. 
and distance from each other you don't want to have uniformity because uniformity causes things to be less dynamic <laughs> is it broken again ha <sighs> we're gonna use this <laughs> I can't I don't want to use this actually it's working pretty good in your face collie race All right, guys, so that's where I wanted to land today. Definitely like and subscribe if you like what you see. Please hit that notification bell. It helps, because if you don't hit the notification bell, what ends up happening is you'll never see the next video. You'll subscribe, but you'll be like, I remember, I remember subscribing to that Mike character. I remember he was fun. He made fun of himself. I like people that make fun of themselves. You know? And, and he draws things that I can relate to um, hit that notification bell because whenever you do that then suddenly every single time I post a video it goes right to your inbox and you know sometimes you're like oh gosh with this guy please stop posting eh, unsubscribe but if you want to see more videos definitely hit that that notification bell and hit that subscription trying to grow the channel trying to become a millionaire that's a complete lie <laughs> I could care less you know, most a lot of people get to that point in their YouTube channel that they, they lose sight of why they originally started their YouTube channel. Because they buy Teslas and they roll around and... Yeah, no, that's... No. Frankly, I could buy a Tesla if I wanted to. You know, and then I wouldn't be able to eat or put clothing on my back. But I would have a Tesla. What I'm basically trying to say is I don't do this for the money. I only really want to do this so I get this information out to you guys because, man, the Internet is such a wonderful place, especially for learning. And those of you who don't have the money to go and spend on an education, you know, definitely subscribe. And I'm going to make in more videos like this for you guys. So thank you guys, and we'll see you next time. Okay? Bye.